Hello everyone and welcome to Metagame Mastery. Today we're taking a look at the full deck lists and card images for the final dual deck series, Elves vs. Inventors. If you enjoy our content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Big time! Go time! Let's go! First up, there he is, Azuri. The big reveal of the premium foil for the Elf deck. If you watched our other video about the packaging preview, you'll note that this card was originally blacked out. There's a lot of speculation that they were going to change uh, the regenerate mechanic. That wasn't the case. It actually has more to do with the card formatting. Uh, you'll notice that it has the new legendary uh, card frame from Dominaria. It also has the separation bar between the rules text and the flavor text, which frankly, in my opinion, is completely unnecessary. And it's kind of garish when you look at it with cards that say have a watermark uh, in the text box. We just had Masters 25 demonstrating how absolutely beautiful watermarks can be used uh, just to add an additional aesthetic to the card. And this is just going to look terrible with anything that has a watermark. So I'm really disappointed in that design choice. That said, the alternate art looks great. The card frame looks great. It's gonna be foil and everything out of the box. Uh, so I'm super excited to have a foil copy of this for my commander deck. And Dwynen, uh Guilt Leaf Dane is uh, another good card. Not super expensive, only about 75 cents, but very, very solid in Elf Tribal decks for singleton formats. Can Canadian Highlander and Commander. Uh, if you're looking to build either, this is a great pickup. Elvish Archdruid, featuring new alternate art, and frankly, it's just absolutely spectacular. An absolute staple across many, many formats. You see this in Modern, you see this in Legacy, you see this in Commander Elf Tribal. It's both a Lord and a Priest of Titania ability, goes infinite with many, many combos. It's an absolutely fantastic inclusion here. Gladeheart Cavalry is in this. <laughs> Regal Force is also uh, included in here. This is a, a great card. Obviously not an elf, but you do find it included in many legacy elf builds. And of course, uh, in commander play. Only costs about a buck, but still very nice inclusion. And we're getting two copies of Sylvan Advocate. This card saw a great deal of play in Standard back in its day. It stalls the board early, and then it grows your team late. Really great, especially in Landfall-type decks. We're getting one copy of Talara's Battalion. Just a super value card. Two mana, even, even with a conditional play uh, clause built into the card. For a 4-3 trample is solid. Yeva Nature's Herald gets a reprint here. And that's something I'm actually pretty excited about. Because while she's not all that valuable uh, dollar-wise, she always seems to be sold out on the sites I'm looking at. So there must be some sort of discrepancy between supply and demand. She's getting the new legendary card frame. And just having the ability to flash her into play as a potential combat trick and at the same time, giving you the ability to flash into play all your creatures in your creature deck makes her a great budget alternative to Videlkin Ori for your green decks. Very cool inclusion. And Elvish Aberration also gets a reprint here. Just like in Masters 25, this card is fantastic, specifically for cube play. Elvish Bender gets a reprint here. I guess Timberwatch Elf has been done a little too much, huh? Elvish Mystic gets a reprint here. I always find myself needing a couple more of these, so that's not always nice. Elvish Vanguard gets a reprint as well. This card does some serious work once you get it onto the battlefield. Azuri's Archers gets a reprint. Solid, solid choice. Uh, both for flavor and pauper play. 
Fierce Empath gets a reprint, uh, recently added in Masters 25. This, of course, without the watermark. Still a card that you'll always need just a couple more of for your Commander decks. Great tutor for those big green decks. Ivy Lane Denison is a two of. Frozen Tusker gets a reprint, also in Masters 25, and a great cube card. Kajor Seed Sculptor gets a reprint. It's kind of just draft chaff, but that's fine. Leaf Gilder gets a reprint because apparently uh, giving us a copy of Land of War Elves, which will be in Dominaria, was just a little too much. Land of War Empath, on the other hand, gets a reprint here. Uh, it's pretty weak, but it's potential card advantage for your green deck. And Wild Heart Evoker, also in Masters 25, gets a reprint. Just a great alternative in case you can't get Azuri into play for you to dump mana into and go big with your creatures. Dwinan's Elite gets a reprint. This with alternate art. And uh, it's a potentially very good value creature. Jagged Scar Archers was a surprise, but a very welcome one in this deck, giving you the ability to go tall and situational uh, removal on a stick. This is a great inclusion. Goes great in Elf Tribal for Commander. Viridian Shaman gets a reprint here. Basically a weaker Manglehorn with relevant creature types. Lead the Stampede gets a reprint. Naturalize gets a reprint with great art here. I, I think that looks really good. Nature's Way gets a, a reprint. Uh, two copies in this deck. This is Judgment gets a reprint as well. We'll get two copies of Treetop Village. One of the original man lands is super economical. Just being able to make it a 3-3 three, three creature with Trample for only two mana. We're also getting two copies of Tranquil Thicket because you could always use more cycling lands, especially in green. And a copy of Oran Reef the Vastwood, a great inclusion in this deck, also a great inclusion in Merfolk Tribal and Commander. We're getting 18 forests. Just gonna click through a couple different versions of art. Now on to the Inventor's deck. Of course, the premium alternate art foil will be Goblin Welder, which is a great inclusion. It goes really well in Duretti, Brea. It sees play across many formats. It's a solid, solid card choice. And we're getting two copies of Pier Pia and Kirin Nalar. We're getting uh, another copy of Mirror Battlesphere, and honestly... This thing is an army in a can that I always find I need another copy of. It just does so much, so efficiently. It's so abusable. Definitely a great inclusion here. We're getting a copy of Scuttling Doom Engine, which is interesting considering Bryon Stout Arm was just reprinted in Masters 25. These two work great together. And another copy of Sad Robot, because really, you could always use another copy of this card. It's just so much value. And Thopter Assembly uh, gets reprinted here with new art. Of course, uh, part of the two-card infinite turn combo with Time Seed. We're getting two copies of Ethereum Sculptor, always a solid card choice. Two copies of Fairy Mechanist. Brittle Smith is a surprise inclusion that I'm pretty excited about. It's only two mana for you to get the incidental value of being able to loot every single time you cast an artifact spell. While not true card advantage, that additional card selection will add up very quickly. We're getting a copy of Trinket Mage, Treasure Mage, and finally Trophy Mage, allowing us to tutor up three different uh, mana costs of artifacts. These are all great inclusions for your commander builds. We're getting a copy of Whirler Rogue 
And Garriper Gearcrafter. We're getting a copy of Barrage Ogre. A copy of Ma Maverick Thopterist. And Reclusive Artificer. Uh, we're getting another copy of Mirror Sire. Basically, Doomed Mirror. And Nurok Replica. And finally, two copies of Filigree Familiar. Uh, basically, Sad Robots Pet. We're getting uh, Artificer's Epiphany. Two copies of Galvanic Blast. Great card. Sees play in Pauper and Beyond. Copy of Welding Sparks. And a copy of Shrapnel Blast. Uh, for some newer players, this will be their first introduction to this card. You will be surprised with how incredibly potent this card is when you play it. We're also getting a copy of Dark Seal Plate, which is a great inclusion for dollar value and just something you always find you'll need another copy of in Commander. Uh, great inclusion here. Getting a pair of Ikor Wellspring, a great card, sees a ton of play in Popper, sees a ton of play in other formats. Uh, really great just being able to get two cards off of two colorless mana. Inventor's Goggles is a great flavor choice. And two copies of Mycosynth Wellspring, which is basically a weaker form of Ikor Wellspring. A copy of Pyrite Spellbomb. Copy of Voyager Staff. And really exciting, we're getting a couple artifact lands. Artifact lands are typically between $1 to $2 each, and they're so powerful, they're banned in modern. So if you're running any sort of artifact strategy outside of that format, these things are absolute staples. First up, we have Great Furnace. We're also getting a copy of Seat of the Synod, and lastly, a copy of Dark Seal Citadel. All of them spectacular. Great inclusions. We're getting a copy of Temple of Epiphany with new card art. Those Scrylands are great just for additional color fixing for your commander decks. Also, a great inclusion here is Shiv and Reef. Painlands have become much more powerful since the release of Oath of the Gatewatch, effectively becoming tricolor lands that enter the battlefield untapped. Really good card to have in this deck. We're getting a copy of Phyrexia's Core, just a fine sack outlet that can't be countered. We're getting another copy of Foundry of the Councils. Two copies of Swiftwater Cliffs. Those gain lands are great mana fixing for Popper. And we're getting seven islands, uh, new Phyrexia art and Kaladesh art. And we're getting seven mountains, new Phyrexia and Kaladesh art. That's it for Elves versus Inventors and basically dual decks in general. Uh, going out with some really great value if you're looking for general artifacts for casual formats, or you're looking for that sweet new alternate art, maybe play Elf Tribal or an artifact-centered deck. This is going to be a very solid pickup. I'm looking to get this mostly to strip it for parts. Uh, if you have any other ideas, anything else you'd like to do with dual decks, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, if you enjoy our content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace!